I'm very pleased to be here today. Uh, it's a long time that uh, I'm involved in the brewery sector. I start after my studies in 1972 uh, by Lamotte, uh, no, by Palm Brewery. And afterwards, uh, Lamotte, and finally, uh, Orval for 28 years. And during all my uh, career, I have learned a lot of about, about um, the production of lager and uh, tough fermented beer. And I remember the time I decided to produce my own brand because uh, retirement for me is not possible. I don't know why, but uh, um, my wife don't enjoy that very much. But uh, so um, I was uh, remembering lager beer produced at the Lamont Brewery, which uh, disappeared from the market more than 30 years ago. Uh, it was a single malt lager beer produced at a very low temperature with nice European aroma hops. This beer was neither uh, dry up nor a bottle refermented, but uh, its taste and it, its flavor were exceptional. And I was convinced that the addition of dry opening and bottle refermentation should give an added value and surely be at the origin of new flavor profiles. And the goal was also to improve the shelf life drastically by applying the recent knowledge that Orval support also uh, a few years ago into the production methods, keeping in mind that uh, the production costs have to be kept at a realistic level. Sometimes uh, it is necessary to break the wave, searching for new flavors profile. We have to forget the trend which is to copy American beers. And we need to bring our own experience and knowledge to create original European profiles and brands. The beer Monsieur Rock is based on the utilization of reverse osmosis water with addition of salts to uh, create the desirable taste profile. We use also highly modified and low colored malt and ups with refined flavors, but also liquid sugar to enhance the final attenuation of the beer produced. Improving shelf life begins in the brew house and requires the application of a very short brewing method. A combination of infusion and decoction methods is recommended. Decoction is applied to the increase uh, of the mash temperature from 72 to 78, which keeps the water mold ratio at an acceptable level. But it's also possible to, uh, uh, to forget uh, this step. 78 is not always necessary. The, the protection against oxidation during mashing and later on in the process is a key point to improve shelf life. It is better to use reverse osmosis desaturated water during steep condition milling to flush the milling and mashing chambers with uh, CO2 or nitrogen, to add up into the first word at the end of the boiling or also in the whirlpool. 
and uh, to use oxygen instead of air for cold world, world oxygenation, uh, oxygenation. Sorry. These methods are highly recommended to get a better taste and flavor stability in the final beer. Moreover, improving shelf life means reduced boiling time by maximizing the evaporation efficiency and minimal energy input. Also by reducing the temperature difference between eating medium and malt as much as possible. <coughs> Outward transfer time and whirlpool rest should be kept at a minimum with reduced temperature during transfer from boiling vessel to whirlpool. This can be achieved by the use of a plate its heat exchanger with or without the use of a separator instead of a whirlpool. The use of oxygen instead of air for world oxygenation is recommended. I told it. <laughs> this allows to achieve the right concentration on an easy way. And after pitching with yeast, I suggest to remove the cold break particles after six to 12 hours fermentation, depending on the fermentation temperature, to avoid the formation of off flavors. I know this method is probably not anymore in the trend because it is time and capacity consuming. But I have applied this method for many years and I'm still convinced that it is a good way to achieve a nice, clean aroma. The main fermentation needs to be achieved between 5 and 10 degrees. It also makes the removal of the cold break more easier. The choice of the yeast strain is for, from importance for the main fermentation and is based on the following requirements. High attenuation rate, ability to ferment at very low temperature, and ability to flocculate, which avoids unacceptably high residual yeast counts into the green beer. About the green beer treatment before maturation can be achieved in different ways. For example, the application of a low temperature before cropping from the bottom of the fermenting vessel is possible. In this case, it's also impossible to achieve a control yeast count for the maturation. Nevertheless, the centrifugation of the green beer with yeast recuperation is better and is able to reach a real control yeast count for the maturation. Cropping at low temperature results in a dry hopping of at low temperature too. It's also possible to perform the dry hopping at the end of the main fermentation before cooling. But this method makes it impossible to get a controlled yeast count during this step. I suggest and I prefer to crop the yeast directly from the fermenting vessel at low temperature or to go through a centrifuge to adjust the yeast level and afterwards adapt the dry hopping temperature using a heat exchanger during transfer of the green beer. But yeah, there is a problem this makes impossible to achieve the process performing the main fermentation and the maturation in the same vessel. Another possibility is to use a centrifuge to get the right yeast count in the green beer. 
to use a plate ex exchanger to get the right temperature and to perform dry hopping just before bottling or during the maturation time by recirculation on uh, of dosing system. Dry hopping in presence of active yeast improved the beer value, for sure, but on a certain way. Active yeast protects the beer from oxidation. Everybody know that. By capturing molecular oxygen and improves the beer flavor by increasing uh, some uh, aroma uh, components like citronellol, synthesizing nice flavors as lactones and liberating aglicons from glucosides as linalol, geraniol, etc. But the, the question remains, does the yeast count influence the effect of dry hopping on the flavor and taste? In my opinion, it is clear that when the yeast count at the, and the temperature are under control, knowing that in some cases active yeast can decrease the beer value by liberating esterase and metabolizing aldehydes, I'm still convinced that by controlling these two parameters, there is no effect to expect on the taste and aroma in, of the final beer. I have a, a small problem, probably, but it's not of importance. Again, and according to my experience, dry hopping at low temperature with adapted cheese cone gives a beer more stable, even more than one year after the bottling time. This is my own experience with my beer. This is not yet confirmed by analysis because due to a small production, I, have an, I am a new brewer with a uh, uh, lack of money. We cannot support research or pay for expensive analysis. And now the spider diagram is based on the results with a top ferment and beer and illustrate when dry hopping is applied that uh, the evolution of the flavor profile is, uh, uh, is very important. But I don't think that we get the same, uh, the same profile when uh, we are working uh, with lager yeast at, at very low temperature. That is my experience. And you also see that after a bottling, the aroma profile uh, change a lot. Anyway, refermentation has an added value if the yeast is able to ferment rapidly, even at low temperature, and stick on the bottom of the bottle or keg. I am I'm bottling my beer in the UK uh, at very low temperature, means zero degrees C, because I also use nitrogen during bottling and uh, due to the, the quality of the yeast, but uh, also the yeast strain, uh, I see that we get a, a very fast refermentation in the bottle. So everything needs to be, to be made of the right way, but uh, everybody knows that. Huh? Finally, to conclude my talk, some analytical results, uh, thanks to uh, KU Leuven and Kevin and uh, Gino and so on. Uh, I've got some uh, analytical results uh, on the left side, my beer, on the right side, a top fermented beer. I cannot remember the name of the brand. The main difference between the lager and the top fermented beer is the concentration of isobutanol and isoamyl alcohol, which is about 10 times higher and above the threshold 
in the top fermented beer. This gives a uh, mouthfeel for sure, but there are other flavor profiles also possible. And regarding the esters, yeah, it's a very uh, strain dependent, so uh, uh, there is practice nothing to, to tell about it. And everybody knows that um, esters contribute to the fruity and the flowery aroma. So, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, I'm still present at the moment to answer them. And finally, I think uh, to my friend, Paul, it was the, the time to say bye-bye and uh, thank you for what he did, for his kindness also. It was very interesting. I have one question for you. You applied the uh, decoction method in the brew house. What's the reason for that, for its uh, impact on temperature? Uh, um, normally, uh, we use the infusion method, but to, to keep the mold and water ratio on a good level, you need to achieve a step between 72 and 78 degrees with decoction. Otherwise, you need to add too much water to the mash, you see. But you also can apply uh, just uh, heating, and then you don't change the uh, ratio. Oh, oh, oh. Well, I could, the decoction of heating is uh, for me the same, sorry. OK, thank you. You're welcome. For the refermentation in the bottles, do, does it mean that you add sugar before bottling the beer, or you add some uh, extract left, na some like natural extract, and put in the bottles before it is fully attenuated? We, we achieve, after maturation, we achieve uh, filtration. And means uh, there is about zero uh, yeast into the beer. So, and before bottling, we add some yeast. Uh, a mix of two uh, yeast strain, and then we achieve the uh, the bottling at very low temperature. Okay, but there is some residual extract left before bottling, where you add sugar so the yeast can make the CO2. You can you can add some sugar, or uh, but you can achieve the final attenuation after main fermentation or after maturation. It depends the way you you go through the, the, the process, uh, fermentation, maturation. But it's it's quite easy to achieve the final attenuation uh, even after main fermentation. Okay, fine. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, thanks. So let's thank uh, Jean-Marie one more time for his lecture. Thanks.